Scores of American reporters have now joined U.S. military units in Kuwait as part of the Pentagon's effort to make any war with Iraq what the Pentagon calls a media-friendly campaign. Another part of that effort is on display at the U.S. Military Command Center in Qatar. A Hollywood set designer was brought in to create a $200,000 backdrop for official war briefings. And tied in with that is the worship of Pentagon technology. I, I, I've fallen almost in love with the F-18 Super Hornet because it's, it's quite a versatile plane. I gotta tell you, my favorite aircraft, the A-10 Warthog. I love the Warthogs. <laughs> this morning around 4 a.m. local time, the first three took off, and when you're 300 feet away from them, when they do it, you hear it in your shoes and feel it in your gut. The Pentagon's influence on war coverage has also been evident in the news media's tendency to focus on the technical sophistication of the latest weaponry. Great Should they have used so. more? Should they, you know, use a Moab, the mother of all bombs, and well, a few <laughs> daisy cutters? And, right. you know, let's not just stop I, at a couple of cruise missiles. <laughs> yeah, only okay. Newest, biggest, baddest U.S. bomb. We'll and pound them with 2,000-pound bombs and then go 2, in. 2,000-pound bombs in urban areas? Oh, sure. The plane yeah. I'm holding in my hand here, the F-117 stealth fighter, was used in these attacks significantly. How do you steer this thing? I mean, there's no, I mean, you have a stick. Is that right? Sure. We have a... Uh, both of us have matching center stick with left throttles. Uh, you can do every... Every war, we have U.S. news media that have praised the latest in the state-of-the-art killing technology from the present moment to the war in Vietnam. B-57s, the British call them Canberra jets. We're using them very effectively here in this war in Vietnam to dive bomb uh, the Viet Cong in these jungles beyond Da Nang here. Colonel, what's our mission we're about to embark on? Well, our mission today, sir, is to report down to the site of the ambush 70 miles south of here and attempt to uh, kill the BC. The Colonel has just advised me that that is our target area right over there. One, two, three, four, we dumped our bombs and now a tremendous G-load as we pull out of the dive. Oh, I know something of what those astronauts must go through. Well, Colonel, <laughs> it's a great way to go to war. And there's a kind of idolatry there. Some might see it as worship of the gods of metal. That's the JDAM. Uh, it is a 2,000 pound bomb uh, that is deadly accurate. Uh, and that is the thing that is allowing us, uh, allowed us in Afghanistan and will allow us in this next conflict to be terribly accurate, terribly precise, and terribly destructive. Amazing. In fact, even as US military technology has become increasingly sophisticated, with the development of so-called smart bombs and other forms of precision-guided weaponry. Civilian casualties now greatly outnumber military deaths, a grim toll that has steadily increased since World War I. Official, this is going to be the entire nine yards. It was a breathtaking display of firepower. There's kind of a, an acculturated callousness towards what happens at the other end of U.S. weapons. Behind the flight deck, the weapons officer who goes by the call sign Oasis will never see the ground or the target for that matter. The airfield is simply a fuzzy image on his radar. And this is another very insidious aspect of war propaganda. There's a bias involved where because the United States has access to high-tech military weaponry, that somehow to slaughter people from 30,000 feet in the air or 1,000 feet in the air from high-tech machinery is uh, somehow moral, whereas uh, strapping on a suicide belt and blowing people up is uh, seen as the exact opposite. The targeting capabilities and the care that goes into targeting to see that the precise targets are struck and that uh, other targets are not struck is as impressive as anything anyone could see. The care that goes into it, the humanity that goes into it, to see that 
military targets are are destroyed to be sure but that it's done in a way and in a manner and in a destruct in a direction and with a weapon that is appropriate to that very particular eyes target the weapons that are being used today have a degree of precision that no one ever dreamt of